Hi guys, it's Seema. I wanted to talk a little bit about the project that my husband and I have been working on and that is to make tire pads out of old tires. Um, we really like tires as a striking target for both knife and stick and oftentimes we'll just go out there and hold up a whole tire. Um, but we've seen people who have like little almost shields or kick pads that are made out of tires and there is actually a guy in Munich that makes them but shipping to the US is a bajillion dollars. So even though his look really nice um, and all of the stuff he sells is really nice. I'll actually put a link to that in the description below in case you're interested and are willing to pay the shipping because his stuff is really great. Um, so we thought we would try to make our own. And so I thought now that we've done it, I would make a video on how we did it in case you wanted to try. So we cut up two tires. I cut them up with a chop saw. We cut one of them into thirds. Uh, so that way we have three little little pads and then we cut one of them in half for the times when we're doing big strikes on a sh on a tire shield uh, where we, we would normally be holding up the whole tire now we only have to hold up half so anyway i thought i would show you the process and how we did it and hopefully it's helpful to you we marked the tires with chalk where we plan to cut on them in advance so that way we could make sure the splits were straight and in the intended area You can do this just with a hacksaw, but it seemed like it was gonna be way, way, way more work and a lot more time consuming, so we just used a chop saw. Chop saws are made to cut metal, so we knew it would make quick work of the steel bands and the wires in the tire, which were the biggest concern. Although metal will spark a lot when it's cut, and you can see the sparks here as we go through the steel bands, the problem with the tire was actually heating up and smoking a lot, and hopefully not catching fire. We found it much easier to do this as a two-person team with one to hold the tire and the other to operate the saw. You could put the saw on the ground and place the tire, and but the saw blade will actually push back on the tire a lot, so it really helps to have someone pushing it into the blade from the other side. We had a fire extinguisher handy and we had a hose nearby in case it caught fire. And we ended up actually using the hose quite a bit to run cool water over the cuts when they started smoking a lot, um, just to keep the smoke down and hopefully prevent a fire. And it actually did throw little bits of burning rubber while we cut it. So I actually highly recommend wearing long sleeves and eye protection while you do this. We also used mask just because rubber fires do not smell delicious. You want to place the handles close enough to the edges to give your hand room so your knuckles don't get hit when the tire flexes under the blows. But if you put it too close to the edge, there's not going to be enough strength in the structure of the tire to handle the force of the hits. So consider both these things when deciding where to place the handle and find somewhere that you feel gives your hands enough room without it being too flimsy of a spot on the rubber. I used a pipe to mark the drilling spots for the handle just to make sure that the holes were lined up. If you mess up and make it crooked, one side might end up taking more of the force than the other and wearing the rubber faster on that side. You can use chalk on the end of your pipe or bolt to mark the points, but I actually found it was much easier that instead of doing that, you put a little bit of paint on each end and then press it right into the tire and so it gave me two perfect bullseyes to aim for when I went to drill. We tried a few different handle options, but ultimately what we went with was a half inch all thread cut to a seven inch length. The optimal length of the all thread will obviously depend on the size of the tire that you're working with. These are small tires from my husband's little commuter car, so we only needed seven inches. You can also use a carriage bolt or a hex bolt of the appropriate length. We tried both of these uh, in addition to trying a half inch pipe. I didn't like the hex under the head of the carriage bolt. Uh, I had a hard time sinking it into the tire itself and I didn't like the way it stuck out when it wasn't sunk in. The hex bolt was a little better, but the heavy duty head stuck out a bit too far and with the sharp hex corners, so it wasn't really ideal. It was also very difficult to find either of these threaded all the way to the head of the bolt, which you'll want so you can secure with a nut on the inside as well. On the inside, we used regular nuts, while on the outside, we used washers and locking half nuts to keep the amount sticking out on the outside surface to a minimum. When it was time to drill the actual holes, I just took the tire out to the dirt and drilled from the inside of the tire out. Drilling from the outside in is actually pretty challenging because the rubber will push in and the bit can slip. Make sure you use a drill bit that is the same size as your bolt or all thread or maybe even slightly smaller because it will expand to accommodate the bolt, but you don't want it loose from a too large hole. Just because of how much give the rubber has, a standard drill bit will cut more of an X than whittling an actual round hole in the rubber. And you may end up with little rubber tags that you'll want to cut off to make the hole a little bit cleaner looking, uh, depending on how picky you are. 
So let's get started on the actual process. You want to take your all thread and put your half nut on the end of it. Of course, if you're using a bolt, you don't need to do this. Then you're going to slide your washer all the way down to the end, and then you're going to muscle that through the tire. If you cut your hole small enough, which you should have, it might take a little bit of work to push it all the way through, but you want to get that all the way in there. And once it is all the way in there, you want to go ahead and take one of your standard nuts and you want to screw it all the way down into the inside of the tire. You don't need to worry about getting it super tight. You can tighten it later, but you want to make sure you have room in there for the handle. What I did for the handle so you're not holding on to the threading is I just got some 3 4 inch vinyl tubing. I cut it with a pipe cutter to the length that I want and then I just slid it over the bolt. You can use a bunch of different things here. You can use pipe insulation, you can use hockey tape, you can do a number of things but you don't want to really be holding on to those threads that's not very comfortable at all. So you want to find some sort of solution. Once the tubing is on, I then put another standard nut on the inside. Then I pushed the tip through the wall of the tire. And on the outside, I put another washer and another half nut. And then at this point, you can go through with your wrench and you can tighten up all those nuts to make sure they are tight against the tire so the handle does not move. Now, of course, the final step is to repeat the exact same thing on the other side, and then you have a finished tire shield with some pretty nice, comfortable handles, hopefully, and you can head outside with your husband, or I guess someone else, and you can have them hit it to test it out to make sure it works and it doesn't explode or catch fire or anything like that, as ours did not, you could see, successful. One note, if you're hitting them with a the stick, they will totally black up the end of your stick. So if you care about the appearances, you might want to use a pair of cheap sticks or something like that. Um, but it's a really interesting sensation hitting the tire if you've never done it. Unlike hitting a heavy bag, um, it has that bounce and the reverb that you don't really get with a bag. And um, But if you've also like done knife training and you've never done it with any sort of force, because you've mostly done it on people, or maybe you've done it on a heavy, heavy bag, but you don't want to break your heavy bag, uh, the tire is really good to show you, you know, how hard you really need to do it um, and makes you really appreciate considerations like your hand slipping up onto the blade and things like that. So I hope this was either helpful or at least interesting to you and thank you for watching.